One more outing with the Three Stooges, Mo, Larry, and Curly Joe. They went to space. They they met Hercules and Snow White. They also faced off against Martians in orbit and went around the world in a daze. But now the Old West is their next destination. And it's just going to be as zany and wacky as ever. With a little help from a person who would be Batman, that is. Prepare yourselves as I review the Three Stooges' final film, The Outlaws is Coming. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews, you lame brain. So, greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1965 Western comedy, The Outlaws is Coming, released by Columbia, starring the Three Stooges in their final theatrical film after their 1959 resurgence, with Mo, Larry, and Curly Joe. Like the previous film, Three Stooges Go Around the World in a Days, this film was co-written, produced, and directed by Mo's son-in-law, Norman Mauer. The film also stars Adam West, who the following in January of the following year would would get a start in playing TV's Batman, along with as well as Nancy Kobeck, recently appeared in the first episode of the hit sitcom Bewitched. And longtime Stooges recurring star Emil Sitka. Plus others and what have you. This film was released on January 14, 1965, and as I've said, the next in January the next year, Batman would, put, would come out with Adam West. Now then, this film was another million dollar success. In the year 1871, in the frontier town of Casper, Wyoming, a nefarious individual named Rance Roden devises a scheme to eradicate the buffalo population thereby inciting unrest among the Native American population. His ulterior motive is to eliminate the U.S. Cavalry, his true adversary, allowing him and his cohorts to seize control of the Western territories. Simultaneously, the editorial board of a Boston magazine learns of the Buffalo Massacre and dispatches assistant editor Kenneth Cabot to Casper to investigate the matter. Coincidentally, uh, Cabot learns of his new assignment while Mo, Larry, and Curly Joe visits his photographic studio to capture an image of his pet skunk named Elvis. Yes, you heard me correctly. And upon arriving in Casper, Cabot's ab marksmanship clandestinely, clandestinely, excuse me, aided by the sharpshooter Annie Oakley, earns him the position of town sheriff, but unbeknownst to Rance, his plan to eliminate Cabot is scored when the Stooges surreptitiously infiltrate his gang's hideout and immobilize their firearms. So, anyway, and also that was, and also Rance and his associate Trigger, well, Endeavor to arm the Native American population, including the provision of an armored wagon equipped with a gatling gun and a cannon. But boy, I gotta tell you, the Stooges did a good job in throwing him along with the help of Ken. But this is all the story I will give to you, so if you want to know what happens during this and what have you, and in the end, I'm going to have to tell you to watch the movie. Now, the full movie is currently available on YouTube at the Three Stooges Plus channel. So, look it up. Now, for my thoughts, I have to say this film was pretty funny, just like their previous film was uh, Three Stooges Go Around the World the other days. It still provided those same fun filled slapstick humor we would get from any of the other Stooges films. So anyway, the Stooges proved to be more hysterical and all that jazz. Adam West really surprised me in his performance as Kent Cabot. Very good. Nancy Kovac was good as Annie Oakley. She was good. Yes, and 
I will tell you, since I saw her on Bewitch, she actually played Darren's ex-girlfriend or fiancé or something. Of course, she would reprise her role um, two times. One in an episode where, well, Darren's kind of having um, um, a nightmare or a daydream and whatever that he's married to her character. And, and then again, another episode. Let's see. Um, Mort Mills plays the character Trigger. He's pretty good. And Don Lehman well, well, plays Rance Rodin. He's pretty good. Now, Emil Sitka played three different characters. Mr. Abernathy, the medicine man, and the cavalry colonel. Incredible. Murray Alpert played Chief Crazy Horse of the Native Americans, while Henry Gibson, this who just a few years later would star on Rowan Martin's Latvin, played Charlie Horse. Very funny characters, I must say. They were very good. And and there's Tiny Brower as the bartender who gives them this crazy concoction, why have you? Uh, especially when they use that kind of a cuckoo censoring bit, why have you? When um, it's between Larry and the, one of the bad guys, and why have you? And especially the bartender. That was probably pretty funny, and why have you? Um, let's see. And um, when Mo gets stuck to a chair and the floor, but as um, Curly Joe accidentally knocks off this here um, pail of really strong glue, and why have you? Oh, that was funny, yeah. And when he and when Curly Joe and Larry were accidentally got like a bit of news stories printed right on Mo's face, and, oh boy, <laughs> oh, it was just so funny. Now I like the outlaws in Miami; they were pretty funny. Joe Bolton as Rob Dalton, Bill Camfield as Wyatt Earp, Hal Fryer as Johnny Ringo, Johnny. Ginger is Billy the Kid. Wayne Mack is Jesse James. Ed T. McDonald is Bat Masterson. Bruce Sedley is Cole Younger. Paul Shan is Wild Bill Hickok. And Sally Starr as Bell Star. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of outlaws. But nevertheless, I found this film to be pretty fun. Paul Dunlap, who also recently worked on scores for some of the Stooges films and why have you, also returned to do the music for this, and it was good. Now, upon its release, a number of English teachers expressed displeasure over the title's grammatically incorrect title. The title itself was a satire of Alfred Hitchcock's film The Birds, which came out back in 63, which featured the tagline, The Birds is Coming, which I definitely need to review that film. I'm I'm overdue to, for that one. The film satir satirizes May 1960s fads, films, and television commercials, as well as the Western. Long before we even got to Blazing Saddles, and not to television's key role in the resurgence of the Suge's popularity, the outlaw characters featuring the film were played by local TV hosts from across the U.S. whose shows featured the trio's old shorts Columbia had put out. Now, Adam West spoke about his involvement with the film with the Stooges on A&E's biography. Yeah, according to um, the late Mr. West, said the outlaws is coming. What a wonderful experience. Our first meeting at the Columbia Ranch one morning quite early, and I went into makeup and got all my western duds and came out on the street. And I saw Larry sitting in a chair, and I think his wife was yelling at him about something. Actually, the guys were very serious off-camera. Their demeanors. They were very serious artists in their own way, and I was surprised how quiet they were in respect to their screen persona. I think the funniest little incident of the picture that I remember, the main thrust of the plot, was that we were trying to save the buffalo, and I was the young lawyer from Boston, and we had the same interest, and that's how we got together. So we spent the movie trying to save the buffalo. The rap party at the end of the movie, and Mo says, Okay, everyone's invited to my place in Bel Air for a buffalo barbecue. 
And that sort of typifies these three restless nights. I never really spent much time with them away from the set. People don't do that often in Hollywood, you know. You're doing a series and you spend 18 hours a day with people and you just kind of want to get away from them. It's probably more helpful that way. I wanted to go home with the Stooges every night, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, that's completely understandable. I mean, that's as best as I could do um, an actual Am West impersonation. I'm sorry I was a little rusty at that, in a way. Well, maybe not 110%. <laughs> but anyway, like I said already, West character of Kenneth Cabot was very good. And of course, when he played Batman the next year, he was even more good and what have you. So anyway, The Outlaws is coming. I think it's a fun Stooges film. And if you are a hardcore Stooges fan, this is a film I would recommend you watch and what have you. Again, as I've said before, you can find the full movie on YouTube at the Three Stooges Plus channel page. So that, just like some of the other films I've already reviewed. Uh, so, and it is on physical media. I think you can still get for a reasonable price. I did get in a little trilogy set from at Walmart years ago, along which had uh, the Three Stooges in orbit and the Three Stooges meet Hercules. This was actually one of the first Three Stooges films I ever saw. Which actually, this was the second film of theirs I saw because the first I saw was Snow White and the Three Stooges, which I will review that later on down the road. But anyway, The Outlaws is Coming was the Stooges' final outing. It was pretty funny, why have you? Of course, this was just right about the time they were about to come on TV with their... I think they were on about the time with um their series, their next series. Let me check. Well, no, not yet. But later on, they would be back on TV and in full color in the new Three Stooges, which debuted in October of that year. Which, I'll talk about that in a, in a future episode of my TV log. Well, we'll see, maybe. But anyway, The Outlaws is coming. I thought it was pretty funny, why have you? Especially the little twist at the ending uh, when it... Well, I really don't want to want to spill the beans and what have you on that, okay? It's just the Stooges humorous bits and what have you, okay? So, anyway, this is a film I would recommend you watch if you're a hardcore Stooges fan. Definitely. Okay, that's going to do it for this review. What did you think of The Outlaws is coming? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Please help continue to support my channel and grow and watch my videos. My, my last, some of my last few videos are losing views and I'm not happy with that. Get them back up. Or else I'm going to have to start another Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. A new updated version. Start fresh. Yeah. Don't think you want that to happen. Not yet. I'm saying that just in case something goes wrong. But anyway, join me next time when I re when I give you a re-review of the classic Children of the Corn. So if you enjoyed this, you may want to check out some of these other fun-filled bits. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the previous Stooges flick, The Three Stooges Go Around the World in a Days. In the upper right-hand corner is a back-to-back -back review I did on a couple of crazy western themed flicks those were the apple dumpling gang from 1975 and the apple dumpling gang rides again from 1979 both from disney starring two funny guys don knotts and tim conway or if you'd like another western satire check out my tv log of the 19th of another western satire which actually premiered later the same year this did and that would be the show F Troop, which came out in the fall of 65. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.